everybody and welcome to another Comedians interview for my blog and podcast A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 1,000 comedians and counting over the last 46 years. My guest today is the wonderful comedian Mr. Jason Cook. Yay! <laughs> Hello mate, how are you? I'm very well. <laughs> Good to see well. you. How are That's you? It's a wonderful welcome. Well, you're very kind and you're a wonderful comedian and I'm delighted that you're uh, a guest on my uh, blog and podcast today. Um, uh, we're going to talk about your comedy career and I'd like to go right back to the start, please, and ask you, how did you become a comedian in the first place? Well, we're not made, we're born love, you see. That's how it's... Um... <laughs> I was, um, I've got a funny family, right. we always sit and take the mick out of each other, which helped, yeah. uh, and then my dad, uh, he worked on oil tankers, like I, like I did later in life, but he was always away for like six months at a time and home very briefly, and he loved Billy Connolly, and oh, I used to see Billy Connolly making him so happy, that I think that's, well that's what one of the therapists has said, has planted the seed, yeah. that if I can become a comedian, I would like it, but. Yeah, we're just a funny family. We said, just take and rip them. I'm not sure your language policy upon this podcast. But Say what you like. <laughs> oh, we pissed out of each other. I mean, we still do. Um, and, and that was kind of where it came from. And I'd always dreamed that I wanted to do it. Mm. But like at that time, you know, I mean, I was born in 73. So even in like the 80s, I just thought comedians were born on television. That they, You know, there wasn't comedy clubs, especially not in Newcastle. Yeah. And then um, I joined the Merchant Navy and I was sailing around the world, just like my dad did and coming home, you know, every five or six months. Right. And then a friend of mine was in a comedy competition at the old Hyena Comedy Club, the, the first one, which was in the bar of the Tyne Theatre in Newcastle. Right. And I went to see him, just to support him. And um, that was it. I was hooked. I was like, there's a, there's a comedy club and they do... They do comedy and they were like yeah so i went every night and i would go on the friday and the saturday to see the same comedians do the same sets wow but i just became obsessed and then uh i went away to see my friend who'd been in the competition was writing a, doing a sketch show there so i was writing sketches on a typewriter on an oil tanker in the middle of you know the gulf and then sending them home in a big manila envelope and they were performing them and then when i came home i uh I saw them being performed, and I just decided I wasn't going to go back to see. That's my house. brilliant. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a perfect way to, to do it, because if you're submitting sketches to see how they perform, it, it'll give you experience and wanting you to have a go more as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And it was, eventually they were just doing, the, the only ones they were doing were the ones that I'd written, because, right. you know, they, they were what they liked. Um, <clears throat> and then... Yeah, I just said, well, I'll do a bit. I'll do a tiny bit. And I, my first time on stage, I had a crash helmet with fireworks attached to it. And I was supposed to be like a stuntman. The whole premise of this sketch show is the world's worst circus. And so I was supposed to be this immortal stuntman. So every month I would, they would kill me and I would come back. And I would just, <laughs> I'd just run around the audience with fireworks going off on my head. And then... Uh, That's brilliant. That's all I could hear was... <laughs> two days afterwards... Um, that's fantastic so your your first ever gig um did you did you get into it through like you went to see your friend you were doing five minute slots in in pubs and people were supporting you or what what was your first ever gig like so we'd been doing the sketch show for about two years or three years right and then we'd come up with these characters who were this German craftwork type pop group called the Clashing and Feeder Mouse. Yes. <laughs> and they became like really popular. People used to come to the sketch show just to see them. Yeah. And uh, some friends, a friend, someone, someone who was in the sketch group who was a comic said, you know, there's like a circuit of gigs you could do. And we were like, is there? Because there wasn't, there wasn't anything in Newcastle at that time. And we were like, yeah, yeah, we'll just drive to Manchester and do some gigs. So that was what we started doing, just going and doing fives and like, you know, which was like one song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then do, doing it that way. And then that caught on really quick because it was so different. And like, you know, we had like black boiler suits and we just abused the audience. <laughs> like 
big time abused the audience, but they loved it because we were so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that sort of led to us doing longer shows, and then we did a couple of Edinburgh's with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, was still working at the Hyena Comedy Club while we were doing a lot of this stuff. Right. And uh, one one night the, the comp didn't turn up and the booker said, well, you do comedy. And I'm like, I kind of do characters. And, <laughs> and like, they're going, look, we, you need someone to go on stage. So I, I went on in front of like, and it was rough. That was, it was the roughest club in the country at the time. It was like 400 <laughs> drunk stags and hens. And uh, the first gig, that, so that was like my first stand-up gig. I just went on with two pitchers of beer and just went, who wants beer? <laughs> That's it a way of getting attention. <laughs> and I said, you, you've got to drink it off me. So it was just like, <laughs> pour beer on me. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so, what sort of year are we talking about then when you first started off? When I started off, it would have been like 99, 2000. Right. When we started doing the sketch show, really. Maybe 2001. No, no, 99, 2000. Right. And, and uh, our first Edinburgh... Because you get to the point where you just everything is marked by Edinburgh. It's the yeah, easiest yeah. way. Yeah. So we did uh, Declat Shake and Feet of Mouse in 2005. And then in 2006, we did a show called De Declat Shake and Feet of Mouse versus Malcolm and Miriam, where I'd come up with these other two characters called Malcolm and Miriam, who sort of lived together and were very different. Um, and they were just really nice and like <laughs> they, had, they had no money. And they want these to say, um, we can't afford a holiday, so we just stay at home. Um, like for our last holiday, uh, we spent our last holiday in the bathroom. We pretended it was a water park with limited facilities. <laughs> kind of thing Mark and Miriam would do, and they had this like big message of love at the end. And then the audience sometimes would be crying, <laughs> and um, and then there would be a quick changeover, and we'd come on just to catch and feed a mouse and call them all weak for for crying, <laughs> and, and just crush it and like ruin it for really. <laughs> that's 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 fantastic and, and 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 what a way to get in using a sketch group like that because yeah. if there are two people on stage i always remember the only the only other creative thing i've done apart from this blog i i wrote a play which was which i wanted to take up to the edinburgh fringe and i might still do and uh, it was me and my mate and and once two of you were on stage it was easier to bounce um a yes. comedy off you know because you, there's somebody there as a support you know yeah well you're, you're not alone when you die and you've got some <laughs> the blame is the best bit <laughs> so so with the solo act when did that begin how how, how did that develop well so it was like in 2000 and sort of six I suppose yeah. the second when we did the second declaration of freedom, I'm sure I had been doing some stand up because obviously when you do a double act you have the money. Sure. Um, so I had been doing stand up as a means to an end sometimes, and then it just sort of uh, my dad had a stroke. Right. Oh, and, and I wrote um, loads of stuff about it that I was talking about on stage, and it was really, really going well, really strong, get a massive reaction, and then the sort of. I, f I think we both felt we'd come to the end of the Clatching and Freedom House because there wasn't really much else to do. We'd done like a couple of music videos, we'd appeared on the Tube. Sure, right, um, yeah. We did, we did a bit I, of TV I remember play. that vaguely. I remember seeing this weird <laughs> yeah. but hilarious act because I we used did. to watch the Tube all the time with being Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this was when they reinvented it. It was Alex James from Blur was hosting it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we kept telling them how much uh, we loved his work because we were big fans of the Stone Roses. And it yes, just, because we were, yeah. We were, we were going <laughs> wrong bands, wrong bands. <laughs> um, but he, he seemed to like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so it's and it just sort of became it became very stressful. And I was I just could tell that I wanted to do the solo stuff because I was starting to just do like, like stories about my dad and stuff like that and stories about my family that just felt like they, they were a bit richer than sure, just coming yeah. up like what's this month's offensive song um, <laughs> and what we, did. we had sound, songs like uh, Dead Clown Panic Attack uh, When You Love Me In Your Mouth was was a particular <laughs> from Declection Feed of Mouse <laughs> So that's where it sort of branched off. Like yeah, 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 yeah. 2007 was the first uh, solo show. Right. And um, 
when you um, go on stage, just before you go on stage, do you get any nerves at all? Do you get nervous at all? And how do you cope with it? Because whenever I've seen you live, and I've seen you live very many times, mm -hmm. you are very confident and you're very enthused when you dash out on stage and the audience are with you. <laughs> well, I, I always... Um... Someone once said to me, can you describe your act? I think it was a TV producer. <laughs> and I said, it's an orchestrated panic attack. It's right. Wow. Like, that you need to be... Because I've learned after a while, you know, I've been doing it for, for a long time now. Yeah. Um, that uh, I've gone on confident twice. Um, and the second time was only because I forgot how badly it went the first time. And, um, and if you swagger on, no one, you know, and you, and you, you don't, you're not... Um, you don't care how it goes; it will go badly. That's that's an absolute because everybody gets an adrenaline surge, yeah. and I think it's like there's a difference between. So I've reframed it. It's not nerves; it's excitement, because it's the same biological response. Sure, I get very yeah. nervous, but, but if you don't if you don't have any adrenaline flowing, it means that the outcome of what you're about to do doesn't mean anything to you. So I get nervous if I'm not nervous. Or if I'm not excited, and I, I start, I talk myself into how badly it could go, wow. and that brings you up to where you need to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, there's a there's a band of like, I mean, nerves. I don't really get any more, but there's a band, you know, which is too much. Yeah, yeah. And there's a band which is too little, and then this bit in the middle, that's where you want to live. In that kind of excited, your mind's firing a thousand miles an hour. But you're still driving the, the car. I mean, how many metaphors I can get into this description is bizarre. Um, <laughs> but I think there's a, there's a thing where being reframing it as excitement and then being worried if I'm not excited is, is the. Do you is the, do you think there's a difference between nerves and adrenaline? Because whenever I go to a comedy night, I always enjoy myself so much that I'm absolutely physically shattered at the end of it from laughing and yeah. walking and, and you're coming down and that's just in the audience. You're coming down from the performance. Yeah, yeah. It well, must think, be like that on stage. I think the adrenaline is symptomatic of the, of the nerves. Right. The, the nerves is, is to, to my mind anyway. My wife's a psychologist. I'll bring her up here. <laughs> um, the nerves is just a frame of reference, I think, that can, that can cause it, your adrenaline to get going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Too much. I went through a point when I was drinking, because um, when I do the Edinburgh Fringe, I don't drink. Right. Uh, uh, on my birthday, I think I had 10 pints of Coca-Cola and went on and pff, that was just too much. <laughs> just, just too much. People are going, are you on, are you on cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all the sugar and that, yeah. <laughs> I did a 20 minute act in 12 minutes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, when you're on stage, you, because you're going so quickly, which is wonderful, you're going so fast, how do you remember all your routines? Is there a way that you have to do this or? Well, I never, like when I'm writing, I never write it down like word for word, ever. Right. It just, and if I'm doing like new materially bits, I'll write down the the one words that are the the beats in all in all the, the routines. This 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 and this, and then I'll probably do that until I know it quite well. And then it might come down to say from six words to three words, to you know to two words to one word, um, and that's how I'll remember it. So I yeah. always write on my hands. Always, always I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's how I'd remember any of the, the bits i mean i've probably forgotten them all now i haven't done stand-up for bloody 15 months so it's, it's it's horrible isn't it i'm i'm they're only just opening up and uh yeah. it's so wonderful to go back and see you all do what you do best live but uh, we'll 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 move on to that later um uh um uh let's move on to edinburgh properly um i've i've been i am very fortunate um uh, uh coming from Carlisle I, 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 I live in London but I go to Carlisle every summer and mm. my um, holiday for the last 15 16 years has been the Edinburgh Fringe I, I absolutely love to go and I go for a week and I see about 50 shows and I'm exhausted mm. by the time I come back I need another <laughs> holiday but as soon as I step off the train at the Haymarket at, at um, Edinburgh Waverley 
um, the uh, the atmosphere just hits me. My first Edinburgh Fringe was in 2005. What was your first one like when you went up? What what were you doing? What you what year was it? What what experience? We, um, so the first time we ever went was 2004. Right. And it was for my birthday. My birthday falls in the middle of the fringe, and uh, my friend who was in declaring feet most with me said, "Let's go up." And we were staying with uh, Matt Kershen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Know him well. Yeah. We slept on his floor for a couple of days, and we went and saw um, one flew the cuckoo's nest when the comedians the company were doing it. Saw that. And yeah. We saw some other bits and bobs, and it was completely intoxicating. It was it was it was just incredible. Yeah. Um, and so we knew we had to, we had to go and do declaring feet of mouse there, um, and it was yeah, it was just incredible. It is, it is the most amazing place, and the and the areas that they have the fringe in, it's like a second home to me. I mean, somewhere like the Pleasant's Courtyard, I love yeah. to just go early in the morning with a pint of uh, with either a cup of coffee or a pint of guinness and just sit there people watch and then as it as it unfolds during the day it's extraordinary it's just yeah. one thing after another and if you get good weather and good company it's just the best thing in the world yeah i mean i can't well i haven't i think the only time i enjoyed it was the time i wasn't doing a show right it's the, it's the pressures of the pressures it. of it yeah 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 I can, I, I, can, I, can, I can understand that because i mean 25 performances is a lot in a month to do every night yeah. isn't it yeah yeah 25 I, um, nights i uh so my first agent yeah. um called toby jones i'll name check him and he'll watch this uh he sort of we had like a boot camp approach to it which I kept for every Edinburgh that I did, which was don't drink, not a drop, yeah. up early, flyering, until you do your show, and then as soon as you finish that show, you out do another gig. Yeah, so yeah, we would yeah. do yeah. the show yeah. and then do eight gigs in a night, get back in at you know, two in the morning, maybe get to sleep at four, up at ten, it, and then it just is keep exhausting. that. We've got to fill the room, haven't you? You've got yeah, to fill yeah, your yeah, room. So yeah, it's it's yeah. like a, a real grind. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've yeah. helped out with um, budding comedians who, with flyer in and, he, and I was I was shattered from that because you're <laughs> you're trying to enthuse everybody to go along mm. and do it. I, 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 I always remember, I can never remember his name, but uh, I went with a reviewer friend of mine to this show. My friend was reviewing the show and uh, there was m myself and uh, this uh, reviewer and there was somebody else in in the crowd there was there was it was a little tiny cafe room and and this bloke was sitting at the front and there was my friend my friend and me and this comedian bounded on full of enthusiasm and he went, hello ladies yeah and he looked and he saw there was only three people in there and uh, he went, oh, I'm, oh, ladies, yeah, I mean, it's not much point tonight because there's only three people in here. Thank you so much for coming along. I'm going to buy you a, a, a drink and blah, blah, blah. And this bloke in the front row went, no, I've paid my six pound. I want the act. And he had to do it. And, it, and, and so there's added pressure of that as well because, yeah. you know, no. it's like you must think, and rightly so, it's the best thing you've ever done to go and yeah. promote it you know so it's fascinating to um watch and when it goes really well like your shows do um it's 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 wonderful to see i've i've seen you perform brilliant routines at the comedy store over the years and you've mm. also performed your acclaimed solo shows my confessions in 2017 and joy in 2018 at the fringe um, how do you get your ideas for solo shows in particular? Um, well, they were they were 2007, 2008, actually. That's how old oh, I was. Oh, was it 2007? Yeah, yeah. I do apologise. I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, the, the My Confession show was the show about my dad having a stroke. Right. Um, which was like, uh, that was just what had happened to us. And it was, and, the, and after that, he died. So oh, I did man. a show about him dying. Um, which was which was called joy, um, but they were all just big things. And big things happen to you. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think I've said to loads of comics who've asked me about going to Edinburgh, 
you think you should never go unless you've got something to say because I think you know when you've, you've, you've seen loads of shows when you sit there and someone you just go well, you can do this at a club you can, yeah. I always think that the, the fringe I've tried to explain this so many times it's like this you know all year round you have to play like in the, in the clubs and stuff like that and you know you've got your 20 minutes you have to make sure everyone has a good time you know what works it might necessarily be your most satisfying stuff but the fringe is a blank sheet of paper and you owe it to like yourself and the audience to, to say this is the best, this is the absolute best I can do. Um, and so all of those shows, they, you know, they were about heavy stuff, but that was, to make them funny is the, is the biggest challenge, of isn't course, it? Of course, yeah, yeah. You know, with yeah. the moment my father died, yeah, like, yeah, like the actual yeah. moment, to make that like proper round of applause funny is, is a, you know, a real challenge. And that's yeah. why I always like that. You, know, you should always have a reason to go, I went once and I didn't have a reason and I really regretted it. It was just thinking, blah, blah, this and that, this and that. <laughs> I think I think if it, uh, they say, don't they, that, that, that you write about things that are that you know about and you close the closest mm. to your heart, so your family and and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and where you grew up and everything. Um, let's move on to Hebburn because. Um, mm. I coming from Carlisle, I I am the North. I'm a massive, massive fan of this <laughs> TV series. I would rank it genuinely up there with the Royal Family. It was oh, so okay. well done. You co-wrote it, um, and uh, I've met Chris Chris Ramsey. I've, I've I've seen him live many times, and I've told him the same. I said, I said uh, it's it's it, it's an extraordinary thing. You managed to get a terrific cast. Including him and 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 uh, Vic Reeves as yeah. uh, as as the dad and Gina McKee and everybody. Um, please tell me how this came about, and it, please tell me is the series ever going to return? <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you how it came about. I was in maybe two thousand and ten. Uh, I got approached by a TV company, right? Because all, all my shows were about my family. That was you know yes. all my life experiences, like we were talking about. And they'd say, they'd initially they'd said, do you want to host a prank show or something? Because I used to do a little bit about how I love doing pranks. And I said, I don't really want it because there's millions of them. And like, you know, it's not different or anything. And I said, I'd love to write a show about my family, though. And um, so we wrote one and I, could, I genuinely I couldn't come up with a title because it was, you know, the deadline was maybe that day. So I just wrote Heaven on the front. So it's called Heaven. It's where I'm from. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And then it went... And we did uh, a thing called the Salford Sitcom Showcase, which is where the BBC selects some scripts and then they do them live in front of an audience. Right. And so we did that. We had like a week of rehearsal and um, we did it live on the night just in front of, you know, I think 300 people, but a lot of the, the commissioners and stuff were there to see how it goes. It was us and uh, Citizen Khan on the same night, yeah. I think. And we both got commissioned. And then after that, because I'd written all of it till then, and then after that, there was they said they wanted to make it really fast. So we got another writer in, which was Graham Duff, who'd done Ideal with Johnny Vegas and yeah. stuff like that. And so we wrote the, the so the, we, we me and him wrote the five four episodes. Did I write the first two? I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> shot you know a week of it on location in Hebburn, and then we did five weeks in a studio in Manchester, and then it, it sort of it went again. And it was great, you know. We got big reason. I didn't think he, he would do it, but you know, apparently he was looking for it, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Him down. It was great to work with. Um, it just it just worked because um, you you had a very in, you created a very endearing family that 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 you couldn't help but love. So so whatever situation you put them in. It's like it's like my mum and dad and brother, you know. They're, they're, uh, it, it it reminded me so much of home, um, but it can yeah. be set anywhere, you know. It's it's and and it was so well done, and 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 I just wanted to say how wonderful I Thank thought you. it was, and that means you should be really was, proud of it. Yeah, we are. I think it was just largely writing down things that people had already said. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, extrapolating quite a lot of those things, but it was. Um, it was amazing because on that show we uh i mean we joked that the title this is quite good that, that we were saying they'll never call it head <laughs> it just never would it doesn't say anything um and then so we sort of had a little 
running joke for coming up with titles, and my title was that they were going to call it Howie Man. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I said, you can just imagine the sort of middle class BBC announcement because <laughs> they never really understood the North when we're going. So today, a bag of chips on a colour television causes consternation in another slice of Northern humour. We're going to Howie Man. <laughs> That would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, will there be any more of it? Are you, have you thought about bringing it back at all? Or? I mean, if someone asks us to do it, we, were, we we had a tiny thing about doing Heaven the Musical, wow. uh, which which would take so much investment. It was someone yeah. was kind of interested, and then good idea. Then. We'd sort of yeah, I mean, hey, if the money's there, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's, um, yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean, I've, I just watch Hamilton, so it has to be like yeah. Hamilton. <laughs> it's going to be that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be more pig, pigs pudding and Hamilton. <laughs> um, and um, do you have a different approach to writing television comedy as opposed to live stand-up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, I've always tried to keep my stand-up pretty loose in terms of it's never like word for word right I don't, I don't have a set i don't have an opening joke i never have um i like to riff if i can riff 20 minutes then I, then that's my preferred thing to do because yeah, I've, yeah. I've already heard my jokes um whereas like obviously writing the script is much more forensic right. um and you know you can you can there's a heightened world in stand-up i think when you're if you're a storytelling comic you're the narrator of this thing so you've got to be all the people and Whereas you can do something much more subtle in in a script that that, um, that, that would, would be the difference. Yeah, it takes a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did did you have um, the cast in mind? Did did you have the actors in mind for the the, the particular roles in the series? So did you, did you want Vic Reeves to play a dad? And <clears throat> no, that came out of left field. I would, right. I would someone had mentioned him, and I said he'll never do it. Yeah. <laughs> So I just, uh, well, weirdly, I, I play a character in that series called Ramsey. You do. Uh, which was going to be Chris Ramsey if he didn't get the part of me. Yeah. Um, so there was no one really in mind. When I was writing it, I kind of went in a bit blind. And then, uh, but then maybe when we did, when we done the live version. Yeah. Kept some of the cast from that. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was like Vicky Elliott who played yeah. Denise was kept and Lisa McGrillis who played the sister was kept yeah. and the Gran as well Pat. oh uh, brilliant Pat. Yeah, yeah 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 she's phenomenal isn't she yeah I, I mean I'm just thinking I, I I was very fortunate to see Reeves and Mortimer on the big night out tour the, really? when they when they started and I, and I saw them in Newcastle and uh, I, I remember watching them on Channel 4 and I kept um changing channels but i kept going back to see this extraordinary <laughs> thing and i'm thinking these two are so original that, yeah. that uh, and 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 but yet he's done a lot of serious acting he played eric morcom's dad as well, yeah, well and, and he's a really good actor you know so so yeah fascinating um and very funny um, oh yeah 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 really quiet yeah <laughs> Oh, when you're on set, but one I remember one day he said, because uh, we're, we're getting tired, it was filming in the summer and the studio's really hot. He said, uh, All right, I'm gonna, every day, <clears throat> he said, in between every take, I'm going to sing a different David Bowie song in a jazz style. <laughs> and he did it <laughs> all day. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's yeah. that's what you need, isn't it? Someone to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is brilliant. Um, you have also acted in the successful comedy thrillers Murder on the Liverpool Express and yeah. Death on the Tyne in, in, in 2017 and 18 for Sky TV, appearing with, again, with another great comedy cast, including Johnny Vegas. How did that come about? Did, did they ask you to do it or? Um... Well, they, um, so I'd wanted to, to write a comedy thriller for ages. Right. Um, and then they approached me and just said, you know, they, they liked Heaven, the executive producer liked yeah. Heaven. And he said, um, we, we want to, Comedy murder mystery. Will you write? Will you write that? And so I, I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I'll always do the work. Um, and then I was talking to him about it. And I was saying, you know, we'd do, do it like something a bit parody-ish. And then we were having a drink, and he sort of let on to me that he had uh, been the producer of Coach Trip, right? And if you know that that sort of reality 
TV show. Right, yeah. And I was like, well, we should set it on a coach. We should definitely set it on a coach. And um, and he was like, all right, yeah. And uh, and then it sort of, that was, I thought, you know, if it was the coach driver who's the the detective, but, you know, they not the detective, but they, they eventually yeah, solved yeah. the crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Inadvertently solved the crime. Yeah. And it just sort of developed from there. And then we had it, like I was writing, you know, like all these things take years to get going. Um, so I probably started writing that in 2012. And right. then, yeah, took a few years. And then I knew Johnny a bit and they wanted Johnny. Yeah. So um, I think they'd sent it to him. And um, yeah, it just went from there. We had like Griffiths Jones. I was just going to say, <laughs> what, a, what a great comedian. I I, I, I saw um, Smith and Jones on the Scratch and Sniff tour in 1988 at wow. college, and they were extraordinary then. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, he is a great comic actor. I've, I've, yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I saw him play um, Fagin in, in in the West End, and he was brilliant at that. He's such <laughs> a good. Uh, he's, he's he's got a great face for comedy, and and and, 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 it, and it was proven in that as well in the. Um, comedy thrillers are you, are, you, are you writing any more of those because there was two of them uh, well we did three oh there was and three then, and then we've just done a series um, which is I think has gone down well so hopefully there's going to be more of that well, it's crazy now because now it'll be five like five years on wow I'm always waiting for it to end but wow. it's a great gig it's, it's really like it's very fun on the set brilliant it's, it's brilliant though. that's 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 really good um, over the last 15 or 16 months it's been really strange times um mm. ha have you done any online gigs what do you think of online gigs as opposed to live stand-up comedy i mean i haven't done any i did a sort of live radio broadcast on facebook for about a week when it right. first started there was a novelty but then i was we were, we were starting on the tv show then when i usually take a break from stand-up and then I think I just got behind where everyone had done loads and I like sort of big room stand up like, you yeah. know, it's a comedy yeah. store and like I've got my own gig in Newcastle, which is like sort of 450 seats. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've just been writing, really just writing loads of scripts. I think I've done about 15. They're all out. And I just thought I'd take this time because, you know, you know, usually if you're doing a proper stand up's diary, that you, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're on the road. Um, between Sundays out, so then Thursday, Friday, Saturday you're travelling. So only be and you've got a, you've got a family, you've got to be with them. Yeah, so, you of know, course. Yeah, so yeah. So many days you can write. Yeah. So I've yeah. actually been in, in this room, um, just writing and writing and writing. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's been, it's been great because it's kept so many of the other comics going. Um, <laughs> I mean, like Scott Bennett. I know, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he. I've I've <laughs> ne I've I've never met Scott Bennett. I've only seen him live online. And, yeah. and 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 um, I I go to always be comedy in Kennington all the time. I live I live mm. in South London, and um, uh, um, I I'm always on the front row. Of that he has a virtual front row, and uh, I, uh, but I but I'm also I also sit in the front row in the gig as well. It's a perfect room for comedy, and mm. um, Scott Bennett's about uh, Scott Bennett is going to play live there, so I'm looking forward to 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 meeting him. But yeah, I'm exactly. but I'm exactly like you. I think that uh, um, online comedy is a, is a very good substitute for for live comedy. But when they first started off, there was no audio. So with myself and my loud laugh, I was just sitting here laughing at four walls, and I thought I was going to be <laughs> taken away. <laughs> yeah. But then, there's people like Scott who's yeah. you know it's a gig, it's a gig in yeah. his in his shed. Where yeah, there's yeah, other yeah. people who just yeah. other comics who just sit in front of the laptops and yeah. go, oh, I did this. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, there are there are pluses and negatives to it because it's for, it's very good for people who would not normally go to comedy gigs, but you yeah. can't beat live for me I I, yeah. I I love to go and sit down with all my friends and just be entertained and because because you're in the moment that's the thing you never yeah. know you're going to get well, there's the real standard. electricity and I think there's um you know especially like I was saying I like to riff so when I, if I'm yeah. you know making it up as we go along I'm I'm hearing it at the same time everyone else is hearing it it's yeah, very yeah, little, yeah yeah you know, yeah yeah work goes on up there. it is it is exactly that um 
who are your favourite comedians, past and present? Did did you grow up with comedy, like you say? Yeah, well, it was like Billy Connolly, and yeah. then you know when Eddie Murphy came out with like yeah. Roar and Furious. Everyone was watching those, and um, and Chris Rock and all that. So, I mean, yeah. now it's it's weird to say that you've got a favourite. I think I was thinking about this. The the, the my favourite comedians are people who own their act, who like their act is completely authentic to them. So like say like Gary Delaney who does one liners that's his thing Superb. but that yeah. but that is that is who Gary is you know he's a very analytic person yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you know and he's a wonderful warm and kind person obviously yeah. but it's, that's who he is and like you know Bill Burr's great that's definitely him Adam Rowe definitely him yeah yeah, yeah. You know, Ramsey obviously Chris Ramsey yeah. is definitely him and I think that's authenticity is the thing because there's you know you've just seen millions of gigs. Yeah, yeah. You can often tell that some comics get to the point where they're just reciting this twenty minutes that they can't remember why it was funny <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> but you know you can see people. I I used to uh, when we were doing the musical double acts, especially if I hated the gig, I would be saying the words, but I'd be thinking what kind of curry am I going to get when I get home? Yeah. <laughs> I think this, when you start to get to that level, yeah. You got you got to bin whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. get some new gear because I think there's, yeah, there's a lot of people who aren't, who just aren't don't like being in the moment and yeah, like yeah, yeah. keeping keep your tool just just on the edge of chaos. Yes, just on, <laughs> and that's, that's like that's such a good answer. Um, my my first ever comedy gig uh, was in 1975 on a family holiday to Scarborough. And we saw Les Dawson, oh. and it was just extraordinary. What a funny yeah. man he was! And I would be seven, something like that. And, yeah, then, yeah. and then a year later, we saw Tommy Cooper, and I just got the bug. I, yeah. I, I, the first co uh, I, I'd been in London for thirty years. I, I went the first comedy store gig I ever saw was Steve Gribbin, who was brilliant. He oh, was yeah. on the bill. Um, uh, and uh, I saw Linda Smith, dear old Linda Smith, um, and right the way through the um, the alternative comedy revolution, and then and then um, of course uh, Edinburgh and beyond. So I just love to go and and just experience the whole thing. Yeah. It's just a wonderful thing. Um, we saw, my mother used to take us, and we saw Ron Atkinson. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're not just a pretty face to a Angus Deacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I saw that at college. He, he was superb, and what a straight man Angus Deaton was to him. He was yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, first, the very first Mr. Bean was in that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah mate. Yeah. Angus Deaton was on the deck chair with the sunglasses. Yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. And Ron Atkinson gets changed into a bathing suit. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And then yeah, Angus Deaton yeah. stands up, takes his white stick. Walks off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, and like me, uh, either as a comedian or before you were a comedian, um, did you ever go to um, live comedy as a member of the audience? Uh, it was when I found when I found out there was a comedy club in Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Every night, and it yeah. used to be. I do. I go the Friday with people and the Saturday on my own. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. So what? Well, what are you going tonight? I'm like, oh, I was going to go to the. Uh, I was going to go to the comedy club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, and that's it. Yeah. I'm like that. It's one of the few things I'm not afraid to go to uh, on my own to the to the comedy club. But but because all the comedians now know me, I don't mind sitting in the front row and having the piss taken. So yeah, well, no, he is rich, you know. But um, my gig, I've got in Newcastle <laughs> for, for a few years. I know them all now. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Like, it is, yeah. and 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 I think that's a wonderful thing because you can build up obviously friendships and relationships and all the rest yeah, of it, yeah. you know, as well. So 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 it's good. Um, there's a there's a section in my blog called the ones that got away. And uh, I've written twenty five of them. This is this is why I, this is why I'm asking the question. And uh, there's there's twenty five entries in the blog where um, uh, they've either passed on or I just haven't had a chance to see them. And uh, top of the tree for me were Markham and Wise. I, I, I would have loved to have yeah. seen them live. I never did get a chance, but I've seen everything else about them, and uh, it, it was just it was like Les Dawson and Tommy Cooper. He had the ability just to twiddle his glasses and you were laughing there's yeah, another yeah. level to it um i've got um i've got a tattoo of eric morgan on my leg oh mate <laughs> um, it's, like, it's big yeah 
Yeah, and it's him as the devil crawling up my Brilliant, room. brilliant. Yeah, he, <laughs> he was, he, that's the reason why I, why I do uh, comedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It I is mean, great. I think, especially with, with Eric, because it was, uh, I remember so clearly, he just, I can't remember what the specific sketch was, but I remember he just said to Ernie, why is that then? And, it, and that was the punchline. <laughs> why is that then? And I think there's like, <laughs> there's, there's so much in in that. Yeah, that yeah. You, you're yeah. writing comedy, you're creating comedy. You want that to be, you know, you want the punchline to be three words that yeah. could be anything. That, yeah, that, that's how deep the comedy is. Yeah. It doesn't need you know because there's two of them, Vicar, with a thing. One of my favourite Markham and Wise sketches was a Robin Hood, where he, where they were doing the Robin Hood pantomime. And Eric Morecambe suddenly clocks the camera right behind him, and he just turns yeah. round and pulls a grin. And then the next, the, the, by the end of it, everybody is just pulling a grin, and it's just the most joyous thing to see. And that yeah. was the magic of them, you know. They're, 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 they're just, and you're very much like that in in your enthusiasm to go on the stage and be very very funny. You sort of like. <laughs> get an audience and you go you're not leaving until i make you laugh I've, I've noticed that many many times and it always works i think there's there's um getting a laugh for not seeing anything at all yeah is, is one of the biggest things and i think there's something like we could do the, the comedy store in london uh, there's two rows of seats that face each other at the very front this is a little trick that i do i'll tell you and i always clock who's sitting on either side and what i'll do is when i'm talking to one side I will, so, I will, without addressing the site, I'll, I'll sort of slag that off. Like, like the classic one is if there's, like, if there's like young girls there and older men there, I'll always go, now look, you've got to be careful. This is London. There's some creepy men about. And <laughs> you don't know where they're going to be. You never know, but they'll be just there. Be, the tongues will be pouring out of you. And then you just turn around to this side. Job's done. Audience is loving it. <laughs> and it's that thing about doing, doing very, you know, you're, you're not doing much to get laughs and it's working yeah. brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's so good um i've so much enjoyed talking to you it's 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 absolutely flown this um just before we go is there anything else you would like to say uh where can people find you on social media for example have you got any gigs coming up is there any podcasts that you do anything like that no 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 i don't really the thing, if I was going to say anything, it would be that I um, I started doing comedy when I was 27 and I started doing just stand-up on my own when I was 34, right. maybe. And I think that there's, n that there's no barrier to entry into this world. And I think that if you want it hard enough, you'll, you'll get it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's always things about how it's difficult for working class people to get in or it's difficult for um, for anybody to get in. But the, the thing is, the TV companies and audiences want our voices. And the only thing that will stop you is you. And yeah, yeah. I had to, and all my comic friends, and every single one will tell you this if you ask them this, I gave my entire life to this. Like, I don't have any friends that don't do this from my old life. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think most comics would tell you exactly the same. You have to give your entire life to it. Like, for, God, 10 years, me and my wife for date night would go to the gig I was at. That was it. Wow. And I think if you want it enough and you give your entire self to it, and you know, you got to listen and learn and, yeah, you know, read yeah. some work, and, but largely it's that thing of like throwing your entirety at it, then you'll, you'll be successful and get somewhere. And that's, that's it, really. Well that's said, everything I would say. Well said. That, that, that's exactly it that that is exactly it you know if it yeah. if, if you put the work in then the success yeah. will come out of it it's yeah. as simple as that um and that success is just being a full-time comic yeah That's yeah yeah. yeah being um, able to not have another job yeah uh have have you got any gigs coming up have you got any live gigs are you going on tour at all no no i've just got the ones i do at my gig at the customs house it's jason's comedy club.co.uk right yeah. Okay. Come if you want. It well, always sells out group early. Well, the next time I'm in Newcastle, which isn't very far away, I'll oh, let me know. definitely come and see you. And, I know. Uh, you can't um, let me know. It's dreamy. Definitely, mate. It's been, and it's been an absolute joy talking to you. It really has. You're a very, very oh, funny man, and thank you oh, so much for doing this. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Not have it. 
No. <laughs> you are. You made me laugh a lot. Clearly good. now. <laughs> All right, then. I met a bloke the other day who was, uh, uh, how can I say this? So he works for TV. I make people laugh. That's me bloody thing. That's what I do. And I couldn't <laughs> crack this bloke. I'm at the end of it. I don't, I don't want to know him. <laughs> well all the very best you can't, you can't understand. <laughs> all the very best you and thank you so much for doing this no worries Lee. take care have a good night all the best now thank you uh -huh. cheers now